What up, everybody? We're going to be talking about Crucible right now and how this is the best Crucible season ever. So for Stages 1 and 2, you're very likely to run into teams like Death Seed or Gamma. Uh, and if not them, much easier teams that have even easier counters. But even these super mega teams do have their answers. So right now, I have on the screen a video of me doing a 200 and plus K punch up on Death Seed using A Force and a 330k punch up into Gamma using Dorm, Doom, and Kestrel. Now you're gonna see some familiar faces as we go through all these stages and we'll talk about that at the end and where I think this season really comes into uh, its own and how it's really exciting. Uh, other teams you might see, you might see Underworld here, you might see Infinity Watch, you might see Young Avengers, you might even see A-Horse Killmonger, I've seen a lot of that recently. Um, you might see Darkhold here, but Darkhold has its own answers too. Typically, Undying can crush Darkhold. It's, it's Tangled Web beats Darkhold, which is very interesting. So, there's nothing really in 1 and 2 that's going to super catch you off guard or that you don't have at least a answer for. It's when your enemy starts taxing you so well that the stages 1 and 2 start becoming more prominent. So, say you put nothing in stages 1 and 2, and then stages 4, 5, 6 are stacked. 3, 4, 5, 6 are stacked. And you get through those, and then you have Young Avengers left, but there's lots of teams that counter Young Avengers. So there's nothing crazy that's going to catch you out guard that I really do like about these stages one and two. Welcome to Opposite Day, where everyone loves Marvel Strike Force, says uh, Steven a little bit a while ago. There is a lot of things to be concerned about with Marvel Strike Force right now. Crucible this season doesn't seem to be one of them. I watched Dorky play Cosmic Crucible and all I got was FOMO. A Force is a hell of a team. You, they really, really, really shine. They're very useful in a lot of these matchups, particularly with that Nico flip. I really, really love that team. Having three Dorkies on the same screen, though, is a little bit much. And this, this one has his eyes closed, like he's about to sneeze or something. CC is fun, this Steven says, the, the fool or the pool, depending on if you want to pronounce that H or not. I really like Crucible this season. But besides stages one and two, we of course got to talk about these stages that have actual rules on them. So stage three, when if they're a fortifier, they spread their buffs. So here is a good example of a very strong stage three. So this is the Hydra world, which is Zemo, Red Skull with Underworld, Zemo being a fortifier. And here I'm actually using Death Seal on offense. And this is going to be a trait that kind of determines how the CC plays out for you. It's who you have on offense and who you have on defense. Obviously, if you did have your death seat on defense in stage one or two, you can't use them here. But if you have them on offense, look how efficient this fight becomes. So it feels to me that in this season, offense has become a lot more valuable and the power of turtling has been very much diminished, mostly because Age of X is gone. And that's a really good thing. And the rooms that they thought would overpower us and give us a hard time. They either didn't program them correctly or they overlooked very, very old super powered teams, which I think is good for us in the end. Like, I don't think we want the turtle power to be better than the full offensive rush, right? Like maybe turtling, you'll still win on efficiency. If, if you go full turtle and they go full offense, you might still win on efficiency, uh, but you're still fighting for it. Like last season, you wouldn't be fighting for it at that point. You would just win because unlimited and four was a nightmare. Let's read some of the chat. Room six has been a very easy clear for me with Dark Cold. We're gonna talk about that. Room five is real boring though. I agree, and we'll talk about room five because I think room five is a very special room with a very special team and it opens up a lot of special doors. But we're gonna talk about room four. So room four, hero mutants uh, start with immunity on spawn. They gain revive, but the revive is kind of like a joke because you revive with 1% life. So here is a 220K punch up, undying, Omega Red, Silver Samurai with Dormammu against a very, very, very big Unlimited team. Now, this is after burn. This particular matchup, I burned with Rebirth, and I made it all the way till Sunfire Special. And that's a very, very important milestone to hit because of the counters. Uh, pulling the Gambit Ultimate and the Rogue Ultimate is the must-do. And pulling the uh, Sunfire Special is the, like, the, yeah, now we're talking kind of burn. But what I want to talk about as far as stage four goes is it's not like stage four last time where Gambit had offense up all the time and he was pinging people to death because of Age of X giving him 50% damage on top of everything. 
So you can do a very, very safe attack. This is a 200k punch up and look how safe it is. But you also have the option to gamma this. And gamma, I've seen lose. I've had it lose for me, which is why I don't do it anymore. But I've seen it win on punch ups. I saw a screenshot of somebody doing a 200k punch up gamma, straight gamma, no Dormammu into Unlimited. And then I saw a gamma dorm where you take out Hulk, do a 300k punch up into gamma. Now, I'm not sure it scales to like the 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 million limited, but it seems like it's an option for the majority of players. This is not me personally, because all I see is 1.4 plus million uh, unlimited now. But yeah, very easy to tap, which I think is great. It's absolutely fantastic. And then I'm putting the onus on my enemies to beat my team. And I think that's that's better play style for me anyway. And then stage five, the, the tangled web stage. This is so funny, okay? Because out of like all of my competitors, I think three of them have had Tangled Web on defense. And even when it was a crazy team like Tangled Web, Emma, and Eternals, it's an easy one shot. You just do your Tangled Web with the speed advantage and you throw in someone like Kestrel, Surfer, or Shang-Chi, and you get, as soon as your Weaver has charges and the enemy Weaver doesn't, you just kind of win. Now, I could see this being different if there was, say, a Dormammu or a Doom, but then you have other options to counter that, like Undying, like Minerva, like, like Kestrel, who can do a permanent kill. There's still lots of options to get the kills to be permanent and then to work around it. So I think Stage 5 is like the, the ultimate um, turtle or attacker decision. And if you keep your Tangled Web on offense, there's no Tangled Web team you're going to struggle against without... Uh, with with at least utilizing all your tools. And if you both have them on offense, which is what the majority of people I face do, then it opens up a lot of other doors. Maybe you'll throw your Dark Hole on defense instead. Maybe your Death Seed. Maybe your Gamma. Like I have my Gamma on defense with my Tangled Web on offense. A lot of people have that flipped. And it just seems to really, really work for me. I hated it last season. I thought very strongly that Tangled Web was best on defense with the Astonishing X-Men. And if you wanted to kind of stop too much of the speed advantage, you can throw in um, Emma over Beast and see what that would happen. But people can still mirror that quite easily. I don't know. I, I just like the way Tangled Web plays. I think, like most teams in this game, when you're in control, it's a lot better. Oh, we'll talk about we'll talk about things coming. We'll talk about things coming uh, down the road, Stephen. Don't you worry. So this is stage five. This one played out a little bit longer than I thought it would. We'll just let it do its thing. Because I do like watching Kestrel kill Icarus a bunch. Anytime I can take out the Eternals with them like missing their, their abilities. It feels great. And then I think the room we were all worried about, and I think the room they wanted us to be worried about, was stage six, right? The big Wakanda room. Uh, they just forgot about Darkhold. <laughs> they forgot about how stupid they made Darkhold. So this is a 200k punch up into the War Dogs team. A lot of people are swearing by the Mbaku version. I did the Mbaku version once and I rolled over it. Like very easily rolled over it. The War Dog version is the only team that got me close to dead, which is this footage here on a 200k punch up. On punch acrosses, on punch downs, I've never come close to dying. Even when uh, Black Panther 1 million hits into a vulnerable and does extra defense down, I'd never once had that problem. So it, it just takes a very particular turn, or, turn order, right? You special with Scarlet Witch here because you don't want her to die on her basic. You turn me to rewind either Black Panther with Million or OG Black Panther. Uh, or if there's Killmonger here, you can do Killmonger. You basic with Agatha because that makes Morgan do an assist and steal a bunch of buffs. You basic with Morgan for the same reason. And then the second Morgan's second turn comes up, which I believe is actually before the other Black Panthers. You use the special. You rewind them all, you take all their speed ups off, and then if you're a striker, you're just ripping them apart. Steven says, I don't think they forgot about Darkhold. I think they just tested it with Morgan the Fae and Scarlet Witch ults for turn one. Yeah, they could have just simmed it and been like, oh yeah, Darkhold loses, perfect. But again, as soon as you're playing the team the way it should be played in certain situations, it becomes a joke. And a good joke, because I don't want the huge defense meta. But you see here... Everybody was super close to dead. Uh, now, I'm actually going to bounce back and everyone's going to be super healthy. But you saw how it got dangerous. This was a 200k punch up. 
you should expect it to get dangerous on a 200k punch up. But the fact that it can still work, I think is huge. Very beneficial. So here comes Agatha doing a great big heel. Yeah, look how crazy he that heel was. Wong can finish someone off. I think I go for a Koye here. All right, now I'm getting ready. Okay, so YouTube, right now I'm doing this live and I cannot pause the video because of the way it's formatted. So the next, the next slides, we're gonna rip through it really fast. Be ready for the huge dump of information as quickly as I can dump it out. This is gonna be the final blow. Here we go. So what does this mean for the overall feel of Crucible? Why do I think it's the best? I do think Crucible is the best it's ever been right now because offense is more fun and less auto loss. Defense is interesting and can be too strategic. Damn it, turtle, turtle, everything. Also, oh, we'll pull the slides up. Who am I kidding? I can't do this. All right, so what does this mean for the final <laughs> results? Offense is more fun and less auto loss. Last season, if you went full offense, you were basically guaranteed to lose on efficiency. Defense can be fun, interesting, and strategic. So loading up your defense with the proper counters. Like if I put Gamma, uh, Tangled Web, Dark Hold, and Unlimited on defense, and obviously I'd have Wakanda too, it really drains your, your dorm and your doom, like where you're going to use them, which can lead to very interesting things. Now against my opponents, well, we'll talk about that in a second. But you could do that, and that would really drain your opponents and cause them to have to really think about what they're doing. But it also drains your roster. You may not be able to clear their traditional defense. So, in my opinion, turtling, full offense, and balanced rosters in this Cosmic Crucible, they're all equal. I don't want to compare it to Crucible, but in a way, it kind of is. It's like the Crucible is almost one based on what you put on defense and what you have available on offense. So if they full turtle and you full offense, it kind of puts you in a better position. Uh, if they full turtled and you did a balanced roster, it puts you in a really good position because maybe they won't be able to clear you. Maybe they'll get a couple extra losses on your unlimited, whatever the case may be. And then you can go for the one shot with Gamma. So it, it really feels very balanced. It's, it's nothing like the Age of X last season. It's really well done. But there's always a, a dark side. <laughs> and this is the dark side. So... Power means so much more than before. Um, I face the biggest of Krakens, and I am not a Kraken. So when I'm facing a 1.6 million Gamma, I have to use my Dorm Doom on that. And then I got to face the same 1.6 million Limited or the 1.6 million Darkhold, and then I don't have as many options. Now, this is a problem for, like, not even the top 0.1%. Like, I'm probably in the top 0.001% where I'm doing these Jurassic punch-ups. I know lots of people doing Jurassic punch-ups, but I'm doing Jurassic punch-ups to level 95 teams, which, which is insane. So power means a lot more than it meant before, which, good. I, I mean, who cares? Yeah, I'll be caught up to everyone who's 95 in six months. And until then, I'll drop down and I'll face some more interesting people, more even to me, and it'll be very interesting, and that's fine. Um, people who pay get an advantage. It is what it is. This is a mobile game, right? And then... Masters of Evil and Apocalypse will drastically change this meta. I don't know what's going to happen. So when Masters of Evil comes, they're definitely a offense team. They don't get the speed up on defense. That doesn't mean they're not going to be good on defense, though. They'll lose a mirror matchup. They'll lose speed up matchups. But right now, the three members that we do have in there, Absorbing Man, Ultimate, uh, Ultron, and Titania, they are, they're performing very good on defense and very good on offense. So when they come, it's either going to mean like Dark Hold gets shifted to defense or people using Gamma on Unlimited will get shifted to defense or maybe some people will put them on defense and just see what happens. And then Apocalypse. It would be insane if Apocalypse comes to the game and he doesn't somehow hypercharge Stage 5. And Stage 5, they did say, was open to change. So they might make that room around Apocalypse. They may have just not wanted to show their hand when it comes to Apocalypse, that might become a horseman room. Right? I could see them doing that. So I do think we're in for big changes this season before the season's already done. But on the whole, I think the season is fantastic. I think it's the best it's ever been. I think counter sheets are more important than ever. Managing your roster, managing your expectations, and understanding the type of opponents you're facing all plays a big factor into people's success in the season. So in my opinion, and apparently the opinion of a lot of people in chat, Crucible's never been better. 
And I hope Scopely can kind of catch on to what they captured here and how we received it and keep Crucible going down this road uh, in the future. And that, that'll be it. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.